Meet professor of anthropology and recipient of the First Citizens Bank Scholars Medal, Jonathan Marks. So as a biological anthropologist, um, the questions that we ask are questions about who we are, where we came from, um, which are very highly culturally inflected, very political issues. Why? Because who we are, where we came from is something that everybody's interested in. All cultures are interested in that. Um, and so we face some very interesting challenges. Well, my book, What It Means to Be 98% Chimpanzee, um, is basically about how we understand genetic knowledge in the context of where we fit in um, in the great panoply of nature. And of course, it's a widely known factoid that we are 98% genetically identical to chimpanzees. The bad news about that is that genetics isn't particularly good at showing how different we are from chimpanzees. For example, you know, we walk upright, chimpanzees walk on their knuckles, we have big brains, we speak. Genetics, as it turns out, especially DNA sequence, is not really transparent in its meaning. Um, and its meaning is actually very esoteric. Um, if you were to compare the DNA sequences of a human and a daffodil, you would find that they match at, at least one out of every four places. Except we're obviously not one quarter daffodil. So the take home lesson is that um, we don't really know exactly what DNA comparisons mean. And their meaning has to be forcibly extracted from their data. John's really an interesting scholar because he looks not just at the science of anthropology, but he looks at anthropology as science. He's looking at the field of anthropology and how it constructed itself, its biases and its achievements. He also looks at science as an anthropological uh, discipline. John, with his background in science, uh, after all, he has a degree in genetics and two degrees in anthropology, has credibility with the scientists. He can talk the talk with cleverness, with wit, in an engaging way, very self-effacing, yet powerful and focused. John asks tough questions. He can succeed at doing this because he has such a wonderfully rich, self-effacing sense of humor, wonderful personality. He has certainly been accused of being controversial. I think part of that is that he's willing to critique any scholar at any level. He is willing to critique people in a quite a bold and perhaps one might say impolite way. But he pushes back. He pushes back against what he feels are uh, mistaken overemphases on biology and genetics to explain the human experience, for example. Marx tackles the history and social impacts of scientific enterprise in his book titled Why I Am Not a Scientist. Obviously, human groups are different from one another. That's a trivial observation. Uh, the question is, how do, those gr how do human groups differ from one another? Um, and anthropologists have been studying that for oh, 150 years. Um, and we've discovered that um, the commonsensical idea of race, namely that humans come naturally packaged into a fairly small number of fairly discrete kinds of people um, is simply false. That's not the way the human species comes. Um, the natural packages of the human species are local biocultural groups. Um, and human groups integrate into one another. Um, and there's also far more variation within any group than there is between groups. So the picture that we're getting is that the idea of race, again, that humans come in relatively few flavors, is a false theory. So uh, race isn't a question of human difference. Race is a theory of meaningful difference. You have to decide what kinds of differences matter and how much of them to take into consideration as you build a taxonomy of, of the human species. There are this number of subspecies of humans, there are these categories of people, and based on these criteria, I'm gonna put these two people into different categories, as opposed to being simply slight variants of one category. That decision 
to make two people two categories instead of one category is very much a cultural decision. And that's why we say um, uh, human diversity is biocultural. I would say that one of the things that most distinguishes John is um, his commitment to understanding the social consequences and the societal consequences of science and, and the hist historical processes of discovery. With his ability to bridge the humanities and the sciences, Marx illuminates some of the most central debates of our time. Well, I think anthropology is relevant to the modern world in many obvious ways. I mean, the big issues in the world today are cultural. You know, how do we as, as a world um, face 8 billion people, increasing consumption, decrease in, in natural resources? How do we make that work as not just a civilization, but as a cluster of civilizations? Those are cultural issues, and those are fundamentally anthropological issues.